I'm Eric Anholt from Intel Open Source Technology Center. Um, I've been working on all parts of the Intel graphics stack for quite a while now. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is DRI Mega Drivers. Um, back in the day, we used to take all of our DRI drivers and build into each of them a copy of Mesa. Um, this is because Mesa doesn't provide any ABI to drivers. We um, have a, an API that drivers can use and your driver builds directly against that API, links everything in, um, and that way we can modify our API whenever we feel like without any worries, um, and that's very nice. So the problem was that um, you're now copying, carrying around 10 or so copies of all of Mesa um, for each one of your drivers. So Christopher, um, back in 2011, had the great idea of, hey, let's just take all of Mesa Core, make it into a shared library that doesn't provide any ABI guarantees, and just have all the drivers link against that. Um, if you try and swap out that lib Mesa Core, uh, lib DRI Core is what it got called, uh, between versions of drivers, well, that's your own problem. You get to deal with the pain. Um, it was pretty nice. You know, in the commit message, he said this saves 30 megs on disk um, for a complete build of the DRI drivers. You might think 30 megs, who cares? Um, if you look at a closed source binary driver that you download for Windows, it's like 250 megabytes for your driver. Um, why do we care about saving 30 megs? Well, all of your distributions like to ship install images, which like to have the drivers on them, and those install images are not CDs anymore, but they're still at least one gigabyte USB sticks. So spending 30% of your install, or sorry, 3% of your install image on um, this just bad design seems pretty silly. Um, but then this was initially an option, and we finally ripped that option out um, and made you always use DRI core uh, back in 2012 because we got sick of breaking one or the other all the time, depending on which developer uh, was pushing code. So the problems with this, um, if we make a shared library of all of Mesa Core, that means that all of Mesa Core's symbols become public, um, potentially usable by your application or potentially even replacing what your application used. Um, so most Mesa symbols are under a nice prefix. You know, they're called Mesa, GL, Mesa Flush for GL Flush, or you know, we have lowercase names in some case, but usually prefixed by Mesa. And then there's some things that are not prefixed by Mesa. There's the VBO module, which is kind of on its own outside of Mesa main for unclear reasons. Um, and then there's some Mesa symbols that aren't prefixed by anything. Um, one of these is my fault. I put in a little hash table implementation, so now we have hash table insert in our public namespace. Um, that would never get used by another application, would it? So, yeah, we, we could just rename all the symbols, right? Um, and then we just have to hope that nobody else ever writes a library that uses you know, underscore VBO or something. Um, but even worse than making all of our symbols public is the fact that it now means that we have PLT jumps um, between the driver and Mesa Core all the time for something that really should be internal interfaces. Um, I fixed Mesa recently with the initial DRI Core change um, we actually weren't using bsymbolic on libdri core, which means that all of Mesa's, Mesa main's calls back into Mesa main were actually jumping through the PLT because you might load some other library that would have precedence over those symbols. So we were spending 3.7% of our CPU time jumping through the PLT in Mesa core. So I got rid of that. But we still have these PLT jumps between the drivers in Mesa main. Um, Oh, and the DRI core stuff never got brought over to Gallium, so right now DRI core is actually not that huge of a space win because all your drivers are Gallium now. So here's a different solution. How about instead of building one copy of Mesa core and having all the drivers link against it, um, or building all your drivers and having Mesa built into each one of them, how about we instead build all of the drivers into Mesa core? Now, the only public entry points you need are just the driver symbols that are exposed to the DRI loader, libgl, or the X server, or EGL. Um, you have no PLT jumps. All of your symbols are private. 
Um, and you get to even save on disk space. So there's some problems with this. Um, right now, the loader interface to the driver is a single, um, a single static table full of function pointers. It's called underscore underscore DRI driver extensions. If I want to put all of my drivers in one binary, well, who gets to decide what's in that table? You know, I could make, make a copy of that table and have all of the entry points in that table point to something that dispatched out into each of the drivers. Um, I've decided instead to just make a new entry point and patch up the loaders. So you have a new DRI driver get extensions, a function call that returns um, your, your V table. Um, and it's suffixed by your driver's name so that the loader actually you know, asks for a specific driver out of this giant binary. Um, the worst problem is that multiple drivers exposing the same symbol name have conflicts. Um, once again, we could just have everybody prefix everything individually and avoid conflicts. Um, right now, though, we have a number of drivers that build two separate drivers out of a more or less shared code base, where you have the same .c files that are getting compiled into two separate drivers, you know, maybe with some ifdefs. Um, this happens in i915 versus i965, um, also in Radeon versus R200, and it's something that we would like to be able to support in the future. You know, sometimes you want to compile the same code a couple of times for different drivers, um, and it seems reasonable. It's also, I don't want an individual driver developer to have to build all drivers to know whether or not the symbol names he chose conflict with other drivers. Um, it costs a lot of time to build all the drivers. Let's not punish every developer or punish the rest of the developers when they push broken code. Um, another problem specific to classic drivers is that Mesa drivers DRI common reaches back into the drivers using a global symbol. Um, this DRI driver API. So <laughs> your driver has this extensions table, um, this uh, you know, V table of function pointers. Those function pointers tend to point into DRI common. Um, DRI common then, its only way of knowing what driver to talk to when it needs to talk to driver specific functions is, well, eh, we just made a global symbol. It's called DRI driver API. Um, if I want to build multiple drivers together, that global symbol needs to actually point to each of the drivers. I've hacked around this right now using um, just a single table that gets set at DRI driver get extensions time. It's not pretty. And it doesn't work if you have multiple drivers, which um, doesn't happen much except if you have, say, you know, an Intel and Nouveau in your X server um, for a prime setup. So. This needs to get fixed. So I've talked with Ajax a lot about how to deal with symbol conflicts. We've tried um, pretty much all of the options in LD. We've, you know, I've gone through the ELF utils, gone through all sorts of things, because it seems like if static symbols of the same name with different implementations can get linked from multiple .c files together with no conflicts, then why can't my hidden visibility global symbols that are already resolved in each DRI driver get resolved or get linked together safely. Um, there's an option in LD called dash Z moldefs, which sounds like what you want. It says, you know, stop throwing errors when there's multiple global symbols of the same name. Um, and you think, oh, great, it'll pull in both copies of my symbol. The internal relocations pointing at them will each point at the correct one. It'll be fine. What the linker actually does is it just picks one of them and keeps that one and links everybody else against the other one, against that single copy. Um, so looking at ELF utils, though, we have a library that we can use to edit ELF files. And we can see, looking at our symbol table, how static symbols are implemented compared to global symbols. So what if we were to take our DRI drivers link them together and resolve their symbols, resolve their undefined symbols that need to be resolved within the driver in one shot. And then we go hack up the ELF file to take all of those global symbols that are now resolved and make them local symbols. 
So I'm working on a tool to do this. Um, you would, the cost here is that you need to do an extra linker stage within the driver that um, resolves the symbols, and then you need to run the ELF tool over that to demote your global symbols to local. And then you can link that resulting thing together with other DRI drivers plus Mesa Core into the giant Mesa blob. Um, I'm at the point of opening an ELF file and closing it, so this is still to come. <laughs> Um, a size comparison of what I have right now. So um, taking Mesa right now and ripping out DRI core, you get 110 megs. Uh, with DRI core, the current state of things, we're at about 96 megs. Um, right now, my mega driver branch is at 98 megs because in addition to DRI core, there's another copy of Mesa core for the mega drivers that have been converted, um, and that's yeah, about two megs. Um, in comparison, what Ubuntu is shipping right now for libgl1 is 16 megabytes because they've converted their Gallium drivers to also link against shared libraries for all of the shared code. So, you know, DRI core is a slight win at the moment. We're getting about 15 megs of savings currently. Um, but if we were to do mega drivers completely converted plus converting Gallium to link that into the giant library as well, we could get down to, you know, 15, 16 megabytes. So I'm hoping this will work out. Um, oh, and the reason for all of this, um, it turns out that those PLT jumps that we have left still matter. So this is a comparison of the CPU overhead on a popular GL benchmark for Android, uh, GL benchmark 2.7. Um, so I'm running with the hardware rendering actually disabled. I, I do all of the driver work, make up my batch buffer, and then drop it on the floor. Um, and I'm getting a 2.2% FPS improvement in this mode of not actually asking the hardware to do anything. So this is, you know, 2.2% of our CPU overhead goes away when we implement mega drivers. Um, so next steps. Uh, obviously, finish building the ELF tool so that we can we can actually link our drivers together um, without renaming all of our symbols. Um, converting the remaining classic drivers, this is fairly mechanical. I you know, hide one symbol, make the new loader entry point, um, and then link all the libraries together. Convert the Gallium drivers to actually make this a huge space savings instead of a small space savings. Um, and I actually forgot to mention here, update the other loaders. I've converted GLX and EGL which leaves out the X server, um, which Ajax is deleting, hopefully. Um, and I think GBM has its own loader. So, <sighs> seriously, guys? <laughs> um, we should really do something about that. That seems wrong. Um, but anyway, convert the other loaders. It's not hard. Um, so at this point, I think I'll open it up to questions. Is anybody scared of this plan? Tom? Okay, I uh, just wanted to mention that we're actually using libelf uh, in the Radian drivers to uh, parse the output from the LLVM compiler. So, Ooh. Oh, the, yeah, that's right. I uh, moved your code out of okay. you know, if Radeon into, yeah, because I needed to move that in configure so. Yeah, so I was just going to say if you need an example just to get a basic sub, you can use that. Yeah, there's actually um, a really nice PDF how-to for libelf. Um, uh, libelf by example. It just walks you through, okay. like, suppose you wanted to look at your headers, or suppose you want to look at your sections, or suppose you want to look at all your symbols. Like, this is really nice documentation. Of course, there's no man pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may have used that, too. I guess the yeah. other thing to be careful of with libelf, there's, there's two implementations, and they don't behave the same way, so we had a lot of problems when we first started using it, where one would seg fault and the other one would work fine. Good so to know. <laughs> just, just a little heads up. Yeah, so this is a build tool that's going to run on the host compiler. Um, we had just removed, I think, most of our host-specific build tools, and now I'm putting one back. I'm sorry. Um, but it's for a good cause. So, so does this still allow the ability to be able to make certain CPU per CPU optimized drivers like we've talked about wanting to have? You know, ha Haswell GPUs can only exist on Haswell CPUs, and so we know in that driver we could use 
other instruction sets and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so one of the neat things as a result of this is that since you don't have any, you know, like with DRI core, your driver binary, your, the driver component of things is very small and Mesa core is very large. Um, if we wanted to build multiple copies of our driver, it's pretty easy. We still don't have um, anything in our tree for being for our tree being able to decide which driver to load based on PCI ID or something. Um, that exists in EGL, but not in GLX. In GLX, we just trust whatever the X server hands us as what our file name should be, which is crazy. Um, yeah, um, we need to actually replace it with something, though. Um, So we need to actually like get that in the tree. Um, even pre-DRI3, I would like to just not pay attention to what DRI2 says because um, we're the ones building the drivers, we know. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, actually last time I looked at the performance change from using you know specific CPU optimizations in GCC, um, optimizing for my laptop was a loss. Um, <laughs> so, be careful with those guys. <laughs> so I guess it's as a, it's, um, a slight. Uh, well, it's not. Wait. So GPM doesn't have to load the DRI driver. So we could we could cut that down with one loader. We just need to be able to allocate buffers that we can pass into the DRI driver when that eventually gets loaded. Or are you going through the extension table to get at that functionality? Is that yeah. what that is? Yeah, we open the DRI driver and okay. then we go, we go for the DRI image extension. We let us allocate a color buffer, and we then pass it into the DI driver later on. So if if we could have like the allocation code in a, it could be like a, a, a shared utility library in Mesa that we could link to in GBM, we wouldn't have to to open the DI driver at all. Well, couldn't we just use EGL images and get handles slash F links off of them or FDs? I mean, well, so so the, the point of GBM is that we don't have EGL at that point yet. So we don't we, we don't have EGL up and running. We we need to start up. GBM, and and that gives gives us a GBM device which, which we can pass into EGL initialize or EGL get display, and that that's where that at that point we have EGL uh, bootstrapped, and we we can talk about EGL images at that point maybe. Yeah, I, I, it feels to me like we should be initializing EGL for our device, and then asking EGL to allocate buffers. Um, it doesn't seem like we should need driver-specific buffer allocation before EGL in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian? Uh, so just two things. Uh, just some historical context to start. I think I'm the guy that did the original architecture of this libgl versus all the driver files with Mesa duplicated. And that was back in 1999 when we had, I think, four or five DRI drivers. <laughs> and Mesa was pretty small back then. Yeah. So there was no shading language compiler stuff. And so the size even back then when we had you know 64 megabyte systems was still pretty small. So it was yeah. pretty reasonable at that point. Uh, the second thing is. Um, I get a little bit nervous when we're talking about details of ELF files <laughs> and maybe maybe some GCC stuff. I like to keep uh, our minds open to other platforms and other environments and binary file formats and things that we don't uh, lock ourselves into anything that's going to be too uh, difficult for other people to deal with. Yeah. So um, one thing here is that you can, you could still, if you, you know, are using the automate build infrastructure but are not on ELF, for example. Um, you could build just one driver in it at a time and get a DRI driver that looks like a Mesa non-DRI core DRI driver. So you get Mesa built into the driver still because you have a multi-driver blob that is just one driver. Um, and so all that would be needed there is to just not do the ELF step. Um, you know, and you could even not do the ELF step and still get um, a few of the drivers built in together. For example, you know you can do 965 and Nouveau together just fine. They don't clash on any symbols. It works. Um, and I think, oh no, the the I I do still need the 
everything with multiple drivers, I need the simple conflict resolution because of the, the global symbols that we've got. What, what are the global symbols that you So we have the one DRI driver thing yeah, that symbol. One, which is ex and we could just rename that. Um, we could just have the driver, you know, re rework our current shared infrastructure in that directory, which right now is relying on getting built right into your driver. Um, it could be something that actually you know, took some sort of driver V table as the first argument of its functions. There's nothing, um, I think we can modify the signatures of the functions in there. So um, if we cared, we could go just change that. Yeah, I mean, using, using that global, global structure full of function pointers is kind of wonky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've gotten lost in that code many times. N never. <laughs> it's a maze of twisty function pointers all alike. I mean, yet it seem it seems like we could we could it it seems like the hacks you're doing in Elf are strictly to make it make it so that driver authors don't accidentally generate cl conflicting symbols, which we have today. Yeah. Uh, uh, the alternate technique is to have the the pound define the header of pound define symbol names that just gets fixed on a regular basis, so that when you compile all your files, your pound define names get renamed. Uh, all all the conflicting names get magically prefixed with your with your driver, and the only thing this does is this affects debugging a little bit, and it affects uh, maintenance of the overall system. But when you get a when you get a conflicting symbol, all you have to do is go fix that global header file. So when 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 you have some uh, build test that discovers that there's a conflict, the the fix is easy. It, you you will get conflicts, yeah. but the fix at least is easy. So that might be an easier approach than hacking the elf files. So this is tricky with the um, shared code done in the style of Radeon or the way that 915 and 965 did up until this year where you have the same .c file. Oh yeah, no, with a header that Exactly, you yeah. just use a header yeah, to... I'd been trying yeah. to um, just go actually rename the symbols in the source um, so that you actually got, you know, symbols in the source match what you get use in the debugger, which I think is a pretty big feature. It's, it's a um, it's, it is a nice feature, <laughs> but I mean, the question is, do we... What, how much pain do we want to uh, inflict upon the system with a, a custom elf hacking tool compared with the pain, the, the, the pain of making debugging these shared code areas a little harder? I don't know. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts on that? Uh, we already do this at the X server with, uh, with FB and uh, the other FB, ver the, the function-based FB version. Weird FB? WFB. <laughs> so it looks like with this Mega Driver stuff, I mean, we've got a lot of elf hackery and stuff going on, and really the only gain is that we have less disk space. Um, not saying that's not important for distributions, but this is a lot of pain in our project, and I don't see any other project in the Linux ecosystem going to this great lengths to do this kind of stuff. So how important is this really to people? Yeah, uh, distro people want to answer this one? I, yes. Love to hear from you. Um, yeah, the ability to drop from 90 to 16 megabytes of driver would be fantastic because if you're building one, megabyte, one gigabyte live images and that's the ability to install LibreOffice or not as part of your live image, that's huge. Um, and the ELF trick that we're talking about here is literally trivial. It's, it's, it is mechanically equivalent to taking all the C files in source Mesa drivers, DRI, I-965, catting them all together and compiling that one C file. It is literally the same thing and saying, okay, well, none of, the, none of my, only my externally visible symbols are there. That's, that is all you're doing. It's, it's, a, it's a mechanically incredibly simple transformation. And I was kind of surprised that there was no way to get LD to do this already. It's, it is a trivial amount of work. And, I, it, and it, the ability to reason about it is, is not large. It's just like, well, you, now you've got 965.0 as if it was one big C file and ev every Intel symbol in it was declared static. That's the transformation you're making. It's, it's super, super straightforward. Well, and I don't expect the problem to get smaller, but the problem doesn't have 16 copies of the problem. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, and so the other thing is that once once we have this working, we could probably get this in bin utils, right? This tool that, that Eric is building, we could get either in LD or just in Elf, elf utils, utils yeah. or, or elf, you know, whatever, and then a it's pile not... pile of little things like this. Yeah, and then it's not some special tool that we have to maintain, and then it's, meh. It was entertaining. Um, yeah. Does anyone I, know it's, what it's to name this tool, by the way? Huh? <laughs> anyone know what to name this tool, by the way? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it, I think of it as... Re relaxing relocations or, or or binding relocations early, kind of, because you're saying take this global symbol and hide it, or so like symbol hide, or sim edit so that you and and make it generic. And so, well, you've got this this symbol in your L file. Flip its visi flip its scope and its visibility from global to local or from hidden to default, and then just and and have some default modes of operation where you say rather than naming individual symbols take all these symbols that match this this pattern or this regex and and apply this transformation to them take them from global to if they are global and uh, and hidden make them local and hidden yeah I think for the tool right now all I need is all global hidden symbols um, because the only symbol I actually want to publish is the um, one that's not hidden right yeah you want your global default symbol to still stick around so don't hide that one um, I don't know. Of, I don't think of a good name to, to. I don't know what a good name for it is, and that's why if I'm saying sim edit would be the generic name for it for the for the longer thing that's more generally useful. And then this would just be one. You know, we would know how to invoke sim edit yeah. this way, but um, or rescope EU rescope or something Ooh, like that. Rescope. I like that. Because that's what you're doing. You're changing yeah. the scope of a symbol that's already been emitted, and there might be directions in which that's not uh, where in your final you would have to be pay attention to how you know th what the the what the linker had done already. You might be changing it in a in a bizarrely incompatible way, but you know LD already gives you plenty of ways to shoot yourself in the face. So. Um, I don't really see a problem with that, but rescope sounds like maybe the best obvious name for it. I don't have, but there's not really a good obvious name. Are, are you processing this on a um, object file or a shared library? Uh, the it's, it's object, object file, file that's going to get linked. Okay, to the so then uh, I, I'm actually surprised OBJ copy doesn't do anything like this already, and then I guess. It you know, probably I be worth didn't go through the man page for that one. <laughs> okay, the, so I guess you could check that, and then you could ask the bin util guys. I guess before you go. Good news, everybody. So just a question about the galleon drivers. Would it end up being one mega driver per state tracker, or would all the state trackers be in in the mega driver? I mean, right now we've got. I, I don't know the Gallium build system practically at all, but you, you've got this like um, targets slash driver name dash state tracker kind of thing going on, where you're building all the DRI drivers individually in there out of. Um, objects that were built elsewhere. So I'm just thinking about replacing those directories that are currently building DRI.SOs. Um, I would think one per state tracker because most, like, you could do both if you wanted, except that XVMC state tracker, like the loader for that isn't going to know to look in userlib DRI, it's going to look in userlib XVMC. So you don't, as at, the, at install time, we would then need like userlib mega blob and change all of our loaders to look in a new place or set up symlinks to do it and you'd have to make sure that the entry points across state trackers don't conflict and that they've got compatible APIs, which doesn't really seem like a win. Um, given that Mesa as a state tracker is so much larger than XVMC or that or X or D3D that they're 
uh, the size win would would make sense, you know, one per uh, one per state tracker, but not necessarily to have all the state trackers and all the drivers in a gigantic blob. Um, but I hadn't thought it through really. I I sort of you know the, even the XVMC and the VDPAL ones are uh, don't see a ton of usage and they're not that big. Whereas the Mesa the Mesa ones are are I mean they do they see some usage, but they're not the size impact that uh, that the DRI driver the, the GL drivers are. So I, I guess my concern is if you're doing one mega driver per state tracker, you end up with using more disk space because in almost all the other state trackers, the drivers are much bigger than the actual state tracker. You just just wouldn't do like wouldn't have a VDPAL mega driver, for example. If it's not a win, like okay, okay. And I think there's a good question on IRC. I just saw it too. Um, I forget what it was though. Oh, it's about um, if there's other ways to. And I, I've wondered this too. Are, are there other ways to gain space on a live CD, like using some kind of compression? Because it seems like uh, if you have a a library, you know, m multiple copies of the same library, some a compression algorithm would be able to. Um, handle that and, and give you the same space as if you were using the mega drivers. So we were already doing that and the RI core and Gallium core were still significant wins. It, it seems like that the, um, the main uh, Gain is the, the, the that we save space and that space savings come because um, currently all the, dri uh, the the drivers li um, link gallium um, directly. Uh, so why can't we do the same thing that we do with libdri core for for gallium? That we put this um, that part into because a DRI separate. Core is a massive performance hit. Like, yeah, I, I'm I'm getting compared to Windows drivers and I, we can't take you know, few percent performance hits. That's not one of the options. <laughs> yeah, so let's not leave any performance on the floor that's obvious. <laughs> um, oh. One of the other things that this enables that is potentially a very, very large win down the line is uh, link time optimization actually has something to chew on. Right now, there's no, what basically what link time LTO does is you do things like constant propagation across function, across co compilation units so that you get specialized versions of all your function calls because it knows, oh, that pointer's never null. I can just omit that check. Um, if in a DRI core model, that breaks at the DRI to driver boundary. So, which incidentally is where most of our small function calls happen to be. <laughs> right, so, so having that kind of cross compilation unit inlining, well, I mean, Windows has been doing this for years and, this is, and that's part of why you can build a driver on Windows that, that, that does that kind of constant propagation. Um, it's a massive problem with GCC at the moment because the debugging information you emit when you build with LTO is eh, not useful. But assuming that that's something that does get developed later on down the line, or if you're building a a, uh, a install this and never touch it image, that's you know going to go in some uh, in some pr turnkey installation and never touch it again. You know now you've given LTO something to work on, and I've hit benchmarks with the X server where accidentally 15% faster. So. It's not just eliminating the PLT jumps, and it's not just uh, keeping our symbols from clashing with applications. It's also there's there's potential other tool chain uh, improvements along in the future that will have more that can now have something to chew on. Now have have some actual work they can do. It shouldn't. Uh, well. It's, that's, again, if... Mm -hmm. 
it I don't remember the details offhand. I'm going to say if it does the wrong thing, it's a GCC bug. And we go say, hey, bin utils, fix your shit. Um, yeah, I can't imagine object copy not copying your other sections. That would break all the things. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need that. If you, you, you cannot, it doesn't need to change the non, or it doesn't need to change the uh, IR copy of things. We're just changing symbol visibility. Right. It's also trivial to write this test case. Sure. Like if if you re if it, if object copy is actually broken here, this is a trivial test case, and you file it in at sourceware.org, and then you yell at them until it's fixed, or you submit the patch to fix it. Because it, again, this is just structured data. Just you know, learn how Elf works because it's not that terrifying, and fix it. All right.